Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? What a silly question. Why, it's Natalie, of course. I have beautiful, perfect body, beautiful face. I think I'm a goddess, honestly. <laughs> I honestly don't know what world this lady lives on. In her own head, she really does think like she's above everyone else. But the truth is very, very different. So in this episode of The Single Life, Natalie and her friend have gone to Boca Raton to take part in a modelling workshop because after all, Natalie is model material now. She reveals that Mike knows that she's now dating this new guy, Johnny, who will also be at the modelling workshop. It was him that invited her to take part in it. And she reveals that now that she's free of Mike, she's free to pursue her dreams because Mike was never supportive of her. I wanted always to be a model. But I don't have a lot of experience because Michael didn't support my goals. Michael didn't support my dreams. The only problem is, when she actually arrives and takes part in this modelling workshop, things don't go as planned. In fact, Natalie actually finds it quite difficult because, um, yeah, apparently posing as a model is really, really difficult when you're free-spirited like Natalie is. You okay? Yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Oh my god. All right, so let's see. It's a lot to catch. Hold here, hold here, hold here. You know, like, I'm kind of more sweet spirit, you know? But don't worry, Natalie, when you're as beautiful as she is, and not only beautiful, she's actually figured out the key to reversing the aging process. Well, at that point, a goddess like her, modeling's gonna be a walk in the park. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about my age. You know why? Because I look like 20. It's what I think. Now I'm gonna be beautiful and we see what it brings me. So as Johnny and Natalie start to get comfortable with each other and they're planning their second date, Natalie reveals that she hasn't yet told Johnny about the fact that she's still technically married to Mike and she's worried that it's not quite the right time and it might put him off. Johnny technically doesn't know that I'm still married, but I wanna tell him. I want him to know that I'm married separated. But I don't know how he might react. I don't think she needs to worry. If he was able to make it through that first date and he still wants to see her again, then yeah, I think she's safe. The little inconvenient matter that she's married, uh, it's not going to put him off. Moving on, let's talk about Jennifer and Jesse. So Jennifer's still not ready to reveal the truth about the other guy that she's seeing. When asked why she's still single and has been for apparently three years, her answer? Um, I don't usually get to know new people, to be honest. Like... I have the same friends I, I've been having like 10 years ago. That's expert level evasion right there because the other guy that she's seeing is indeed an old school friend. And it seems like Jennifer's still waiting for Jesse to step up and actually make a move. I'm worried because he hasn't tried to kiss me yet, which is very strange to me. He needs to prove that he is a man to take things to the next level physically. I hope everything doesn't end as boring as it was with Tim. We join them on their first romantic date, dressed up to the absolute nines. I mean, what lady wouldn't love a guy dressed in a sequin sparkly tuxedo and bow tie to go to the local restaurant? <laughs> and I'm not quite sure what Jesse was expecting, but he seems very, very disappointed with the restaurant. You have no red wine? No. Okay. It smells like a little bit? I don't know. Oh shit. Also, this steak is like raw. This is a one wild restaurant. And as she gets to know him a little bit better, it certainly looks like Jennifer's a little bit embarrassed. I can tell that Jesse is a little bit not easy to please, which I find really like rude because it's our first date. Either way, as the night progresses, the sexual tension certainly builds. They begin holding hands, playing footsie under the table. And when Jesse sends back his steak because he's not happy with it and Jennifer offers her steak to him, he once again starts spewing these really, really cheesy, cringe-worthy chat-up lines. But for some reason, it just feels so natural. Why you think is that? Synergy, I think it's, it's just meant to be. Now, up until this stage, Jesse's been keen to take things slow, whereas Jennifer's really been wanting to jump into bed with him. But all of that changes when they go back to his hotel room. Jesse decides that they should get comfortable and take off their clothes and wear robes. And then the couple's yoga that he suggested seems to get hot and steamy. Um, guys, guys, we're still here. There's still a production crew in the room. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, I think it's safe to say Jennifer got her wish. 
Now, if for any reason Jesse and Jennifer aren't compatible in the bedroom, maybe they can turn to Debbie for tips. Definitely having a sexual relationship because, you know, by my age, you're really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot of things. In this episode, a very, very excitable Debbie is going on her first date with Edward. The only problem is, Edward seems a little bit uptight. He's a little bit put off by the fact that Colt greeted him at the front door. And then after some awkwardness in the car where Debbie wouldn't stop talking. I have cats. Want to see mine? This is Cookie. She's quite beautiful. No, that's okay. I don't need to see her. They end up at a bar where Edward decides not to drink, but Debbie decides to drink plenty for the two of them. When she ordered the drink with the six shots in it, um, I thought I'm definitely going to be carrying Debbie home tonight which then I'm gonna have to face her son saying, what have you done to my mom? And as the evening wears on, and it definitely seems to me like Debbie starts slurring her words. I ordered a drink that had six shots, but I didn't feel bad. <laughs> if he doesn't drink, then that's his problem. Edward starts to get really creepy. It becomes pretty clear that he's not really into Debbie, but he starts dropping some pretty strong hints that he wants to head to the bedroom with her. What is your opinion on sex on the first date? I don't know. I mean, I'm not against it. But I'm a lucky that I don't need a little blue pill. <laughs> so I'm hoping to be having sex when I'm in my 80s. Yeah. So what do you want to do after this? Whoa, easy there, Tiger. Now, given what Debbie's revealed about herself in the past couple of episodes, you might think that she'd be up for it. And it seems like she is. But when they get back to her house, Edward decides to come clean, tell Debbie he's not really feeling this. I do have to say that I didn't feel a love connection, though. Okay, but uh, I know, I hope we can be friends. Yeah. But like that. Absolutely. Okay. Good, good night. And poor Debbie goes back inside and starts crying. What's the cause of her tears? Well, as she eloquently puts it. I don't want to be in their fucking friends. I want to be in their fucking books. <laughs> this whole experience has left her wondering whether or not it's even worth putting herself back out there, searching for a Mr. Right at the age of 69. I'm 69 years old, almost 70 years old, and it's like, is it worth the hassle? I mean, I'm happy with my life. I have my cat. Poor Debbie. I do feel a bit sorry for her, but something tells me this isn't the end of her dating life. There's going to be more dates on the horizon. Moving on, let's talk about Tanya and Sinjin. So, fresh from last week's revelation that Tanya and Sinjin are still pretty much living like a married couple, but have decided to break up, or is it divorce? I don't think even they know the answer to that one. Well, now they've decided to break the news to Tanya's mum. And here's where it gets interesting. Tanya's mum actually co-signed to sponsor Sinjin. Sinjin's K-1 visa. That means both Tanya and her mum are financially responsible for Sinjin until he becomes either a US citizen, he relinquishes his citizenship, or he dies. Now to become a US citizen he needs to have had his green card for five years. So as you can imagine <laughs> they all sat around the table and immediately Tanya's mum realised something was up. Only thing is she thought they were about to announce a pregnancy not a divorce. Or is it breakup? Gosh I'm confused. Did you call us here for a reason? What's the occasion? Like, are you guys pregnant? It's a, it's a decision that's been a while in the making. We decided that we're um, um, gonna, gonna, gonna break up. Now, when Tanya's mum finally realises, oh crap, I actually signed for this guy, I'm responsible for him. Well, at that point, her reaction totally changes. I'm responsible for you. Yeah, you know, um, well, you can go back to South Africa. And this leads to Sinjin walking out because he feels like he's being ganged up on. And he point blank refuses to accept sole responsibility for the breakdown of their relationship. Now, while he doesn't accept responsibility, what's really interesting, again for the second episode in a row, is that Tanya still seems really, really reluctant to let the marriage go. Like, for example, when they're talking about the fact that they'd had couples therapy, she says, well, we didn't try wholeheartedly. Like, maybe we can try again kind of thing. We did try couples therapy and everything as well. And I also believe that we you didn't try to Sadly, Sinjin isn't really on the same page and he's putting it all down to the fact that Tanya wants kids, but he doesn't. No, I don't want any children at all with anybody. So like, did you already know you didn't want children? You stranged her along? So yeah, they've decided to divorce or break up. Um, are we getting divorced or are we getting separated? <laughs> We're, um, 
Um, gonna, gonna, gonna break up. I don't know which it is. It's really difficult for outsiders, I think, to understand these two's relationship. I don't doubt that they love each other. They're still clearly very close. And I don't know, it's just a hunch. I might be completely off the mark, but I suspect these two will at some point end up getting back together. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if these two have some kind of open relationship, but do end up still married. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you think that's on the cards? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, there is one other storyline this week and that's Stephanie's but look for this week at least I'm gonna give her story a miss there's something about the fact that she's been selling her bottled farts online for $500 a pop that's kind of put me off her I don't know I think I need a bit of a break from her and it's only week three of the show <laughs> I'm not hating good for her she's got to earn her money some way I guess but yeah it's a little much for me but yeah credit to her that's quite ingenious I've never seen someone get rich from selling bottled farts before <laughs> So do me a favor, if you've made it this far to the end of the video, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for lots more 90 Day Fiance videos. If you've missed any of the episodes up until this point, I'll include links to the first two episodes down in the description below for you to get caught up. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next video.